All right, YouTube, Repo Man 64. Trying to figure out how to change the background on this thing. And it appears to be lagging a little bit. Don't know where to do it at, though. I got it on here, but I have no idea how to change it. All right, I want to share the screen here. Many of you uh, saw last night I was on um, Departure Heaven. Bob Barber was on there. Rick was on there. And another gentleman that has a YouTube channel was on there. I'm not familiar with him. I need to uh, find him and go subscribe to his channel. Um, they brought on a gentleman named Bo. And this is what I'm talking about um, for everyone who gets confused when I talk about, yeah, all the saved people are going to heaven in this rapture. But there is a huge group of people that are following right behind us. They are tribulation saints. And this gentleman, um, and with all due respect, honestly, and, and, I'm, and I'm serious about that when it comes to a tribulation saint, that they are a massive group of people. They outnumber the bride by 100 to 1. They're, they're, there's billions of them. And uh, by contrast, we're a very small group uh, comparatively. So... The guy gets on there and he starts naming somebody Clement I'm not familiar with. I'm guessing it's a prophet. And he's citing every Bible verse he can find to prove that the rapture is not true and that we're all going to go through it. And so that's what he wants. That's what he sees. That's what he's going to get. God, we say we make this comment that God's going to drag some people into heaven against their will. And that's simply not true. God wants a grateful bride. God wants a bride that is uh, desperate to see him. God wants a bride that is looking forward to this. And this is where it gets into sticky ground with everybody. They don't understand. And I now repeat it over and over again. All saved people are going to go in this rapture. This guy, while he is following very close behind and he's watching he's trying to figure it out is not saved yet however once he sees the rapture occur he will know exactly what happened and that is the elisha and the elijah of effect as elijah went from town to town you don't hear a word out of the mouth of elijah to the townspeople but the townspeople approach elisha and say isn't it true that today your master will be taken away and he goes yeah 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 he's almost upset about it and if you now rick took the video down which i wish he hadn't because it's very important uh for people to understand that we can't just cross off a tribulation saint and pretend like they're not there. They're very important. And if you've watched me for a very long time, you know that uh, they are very important to me because I know a lot of people who are like that. They're not looking forward to this. They uh, will even tell you they want to go through the tribulation. They, uh, they, they will pull out verse after verse after verse. You cannot know. You, we're all going to go through this together. But then something happens, like when I told this guy, Bo, okay, you're going to go through this. We aren't. He becomes enraged. He, he becomes super upset. And I find that every single time when I'm talking to a tribulation saint, that when I tell them they get their wish, they become upset, like Elisha did to the townspeople. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold your tongue. Stop talking. I know. Okay. Yeah, sure. He's leaving. I get it. What happened the very second that Elisha saw Elisha go? I know his name's Elisha, but I'm saying Elisha just to, just so people understand the, two, the difference between the two as I talk. Elisha falls to the ground on his knees, tears off his clothes, his world, his works, everything he thought he had, and he puts on the mantle that Elijah threw down to him. He put on the blood of Christ. He is now saved. Elisha was not, even though he was right there, he was right there with Elisha the whole time. He saw Elisha split the water. He crossed with Elijah. 
but yet there was something about him that he continued to hold on to. Let me tell you this. When you get to heaven, there will be no pride. Nobody's going to show up in heaven going, oh, yeah, yeah, I uh, I was ready to go through tribulation, you know, but God drug me out of there and pulled me up here against my will. That's not how it works. God does not want. He wants a grateful bride. He wants an enthusiastic bride. He wants a bride that's that's just chomping at the bit to get up there and see him. And so when I say this, yeah, I run into a little bit of a, a headache, but I know who they are. If it upsets you, you might want to tear off whatever it is that's holding you here and just trust in the blood of Christ alone. Now, I have a YouTube channel I'm going to show you. This guy is very good. And he is going to describe to you in detail, better than I ever could, what a tribulation saint is and what they bring to the table. All we bring, we're the poor little drummer boy. We have no gifts to bring. We come to the table with just the covering of Christ, with just the blood. We come with nothing else. When you can almost pick out a tribulation saint because they will say things like, oh, so now you have a license to sin, right? Yes, <laughs> we do. Excuse me. Still have this cold I'm working on. Yes, we do. Uh, we have a license to sin. Yeah, nobody likes to hear that, but it's true. Once you're saved by the blood, you're saved. Now, a saved person is not going to go around sinning. They want to chasten themselves and be a uh, treasured bride. They want to be, they want to offer to Jesus something, not for salvation, but something to say, we, we, we go, we also go get baptized. We also walk up in front of churches. We also tithe money. We also talk to people stand on street corners, uh, make YouTube videos, tell everybody that we come across. We also do the same things. We look almost identical. The wheat and the tares, as a matter of fact. And that's why you'll rarely hear me say, like this guy, Bo, he made it abundantly clear that he was a tribulation saint, but you'll rare. And, and he said he wanted to be. It's not that I'm judging him. He said that's what he wanted. And so he gets what he wants. He will not be drugged to heaven, kicking and screaming, going, no, I don't want to be up here. I want to be down there. Or I, uh, he, that won't happen. Uh, everybody who shows up in heaven will show up crying, thanking God that he brought us up there when he did. So I wanted to get that out. Rick, I wish you hadn't deleted that video. That was an awesome video. And you get to see the reaction that a tribulation saint has when you tell a tribulation saint that he's going to get exactly what he wants. You want to stay here? Fine, you stay here. What? How dare you say that? I didn't say that. You did. So I, trust me, I don't get it. But every single time I run into these people, that's what happens. They simply become upset over me stating that they get exactly what they want all right i'm going to share the screen here let's see here i don't know what i can get out of my way here this thing's in my way get out of the way there it goes filling up let me see if i can minimize this and bring this up there we go I don't know if I could do this or not. I don't accept any kind of money. Uh, nobody's ever sent me anything for free. No chairs, no VR glasses, no Bibles. Not one red cent have I ever accepted. Not that those who dedicate their lives to it, that is a problem. The only problem I have is somebody that does accept those types of gifts that go after people who, who accept money to further the cause of God. So while I don't, I do believe it's okay for channels that do that they can continue to get the word god out so you look at me i work all day i don't have time uh to really do the in-depth studies that these guys do and it's amazing and so yeah i do appreciate that they do so hopefully i can play this legally i don't know we'll find out right
All right. I thought I'd play that. That's an awesome song. And it so depicts what we're going through right now. And, um, you know, the little, the little, uh, I wish this thing would go away. There we go. Get out of here. You guys can't see it, but it's annoying me. There's a bar that comes across the top that just stays up there. Go, go away. Hold on. I got to wait for it to disappear so I can see. Okay. Hey, I can see. All right. Let's do. How do I do this? I choose this. And then I do this. Yay. I've showed you this before that uh, Shabbat Parah is the day that they are going to sacrifice the red heifer. And in 2024, that was on the day Jesus went to the cross. Remember the night of the 29th is the night he enjoyed the last supper after dark, becoming the 30th. And then by the three o'clock the afternoon on the 30th, he gave up the ghost and said, it is finished. Let me see if I can move my picture up out of the way. All right. I think they already did it. Uh, they're saying that one of the heifers didn't qualify. I, I'm I'm wondering if they didn't uh, if they didn't go ahead and do that, and they have those ashes ready to go because uh, they know the longer they wait, that these uh, red heifers will uh, develop problems, and uh, they don't have to be. Uh, I think they're getting too old at this point. I'm not sure. I've showed you this many times. There are two days a year. It's called an equalox. It's the day of equal parts. It's the day Jesus said, are there not 12 hours in the day? Um, it happens on March 16th, and it happens again on September the 25th or 6th. I have to look it up. Oh, I did look it up. So the day of equal parts happens on at the 30 degree north mark where Israel sits on March 16th and March 27th. So six months, it's six months and 10 days. But because the Gregorian calendar has that extra day in it, everyone's stuck with trying to find a place to put it. I actually contacted uh, Sister Sandy to move. I had to put the extra day on the 18th, 19th, or she did it for me on the 18th, 19th, just to just to get rid of that extra day, because there's actually only 364 days in a year. I showed you that on the board behind me, how the Earth spins to a point of, a, you know, a star out there. And it actually spins 364 times. But if you return it to facing the sun, it gives you have to wait an extra four minutes per day, which causes an extra day and a quarter each year. So. It's technically the 26th. It's technically six months and 10 days or six months and 11 days if you use the Gregorian calendar. So keep that in mind. Sep uh, March 16th, September 26th, if, uh, if we're going to get rid of a day, which is what I did. Um, so on October the 2nd, at nightfall, becoming October the 3rd, there will be an annular solar eclipse. And it will create a ring of fire uh, effect. So that Exodus 12 has always caught my attention. And it's what I've always used to say that Rosh Hashanah is not on September the 15th. It is not on Tishri 1. God moved it to the head of the year. It simply means head of the year. He changed the head of the year from September 15th to March 17th. So when he did that, I thought, I noticed the other day, and it caught my attention, and I, and I spoke about it a little bit, that October the 2nd, 3rd, is actually April the 2nd, 3rd, six months out. So if we're going to, if God says, and Exodus, that's the first law that God handed down to uh, to Moses. He said, this now is ahead of your year. He moved it back 182 days exactly. And I noticed that when he did that, Jesus goes to the cross on March 30th, but he was born on September 30th. How does that happen? It's exactly 182 days earlier. I thought, well, that's cool. And then I, I noticed that on <clears throat> October 2nd, 3rd is the day Jesus rose on April 2nd, 3rd. It matches perfectly. Something incredible happens, and I'm going to show you that. 
And it only happens this year. It won't, as far as I can tell, it will not happen for another 19 years. The, the moon actually lines up or these dates come back into play every 19 years. I'd have to go look at uh, when, you know, I wouldn't be able to because something like this is a once in a lifetime, this ring of fire landing on this day. And it just happened to be the day that Jesus uh, rose and the dead in Christ rose first. I'm sorry, Jesus rose first, and then the dead in Christ rose, and it's mirroring exactly six months to the day this ring of fire uh, effect is happening. I thought that was pretty intense, and a lot of other things are matching, too. I'll show you in a moment. This guy right here, <laughs> this guy right here, look at, he has, and I and I passed this to, uh, to Spinebreaker, and he was absolutely floored. Uh, this guy, I think Spinebreaker, also was a gamer and started up, I don't know that he started up a YouTube channel as a gamer, but this guy was a gamer. He dumped all of his content, all of it. He has 400. We, we would dream of having that many subscribers actually wanting to hear about the rapture. Wouldn't that be amazing to have that many subscribers uh, wanting to hear about the rapture? The only people that even come close to this are the preppers who are, for all intents and purposes, uh, they are tribulation saints because they're they're prepping to go through this, right? This guy dumps every video he has. He has two videos. You've got to go watch this video. His, his YouTube is Ghost619. He has gotten rid of everything uh, from his gaming stuff, and he made one of the best videos I have ever seen. And it amazed me that his dates and he's he's using the 1260, 1290 and the 1335. And when he does, an amazing thing happens. It does land on what the Jews are calling these feast days. So I said, well, if you leave out the Cassays, there's not 360 days in a year. There never has been. There never was. When God says 360, he actually means uh, 364. You're missing the four cassettes. When he says 1260, you're missing three and a half years worth of cassettes, and that's 14. So when he says 1260, it's 1274. When I did that, after watching this video, it landed perfectly on the dates that I'm looking at as well, which, by the way, is amazing. This year is a very unique year where, <coughs> excuse me, my timeline lines up very nicely with the Hebrew timeline. So I think that God is using more than one timeline. But please go check out his video. You got to watch this video. It'll just blow your mind. It just, a gamer, how did he do this? This is pure Holy Spirit right here. Pure Holy Spirit driven right here. I don't know how long this guy's been reading the Bible. I don't know how old he is, but I do know that he didn't get 434,000 subscribers off this one video. He dumped all his content and made a video for Jesus, and I am absolutely impressed by it. Absolutely impressed. All right. Oh, this was in his video. Look at the work he's done here. 1,260 days, 1,260 days, and then he goes across the top with 1,260, 1,290 and then he adds, and in in his video, he brings on, I think he brings on Robert Breaker, and Robert Breaker says, if you look at it, and this is what pretty much what Robert Breaker said, if you look at it like this, and you do the 1335, you will almost land on, um, I want to say it was October 31st, which is when the flood began. I, I have to go back and look, but I believe that September 26th. I don't uh, I don't see his date here. September 26th is what I see, which is um, right around the Day of Atonement. So but anyway, you got to go watch this video. It'll explain itself. So I did again, adding the cassettes back in 1260 actually means 1274. When you go from October 2nd, which is very quickly approaching and it is a mirror date to the date Jesus rose. Um, and you go 1,274 days, you land on the cross. The night of March 29th, Jesus enjoyed the Last Supper. At dark on March 29th, it became March 30th. On March 30th, he enjoyed the Last Supper. He was betrayed. 
He was put on a cross. And by three o'clock in the afternoon, he said, it is finished. In John, it is finished. In Luke, he said, I deliver up my soul. And in Matthew and Mark, he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Which is exactly what the tribulation saints will say and exactly what the Jew will say. John will say it is finished because that's when the 144,000 will be coming down here and we will be going up. Is it going to happen on April the, on October the 2nd? I don't know. On his birthday, maybe the, the night of the 29th of September, three days earlier, three, 84 hours earlier. I don't know. It'll be very, very, it's a very, very interesting time to be watching right now. I can tell you that much. All right. When you do the 1,290 days and you add the 14 cassettes, you go from the cross, which is March 30th of 2028. When you do the, just like he did, he did the 1,260 and 1,290. And I added those 14 days back in. And you bring it right to when God told Noah to get into the ark. This is seven days prior to the flood. The flood happened on October the 31st, November the 1st. And October the 24th, 25th is the day that Noah was told by God to get into the ark. And he goes into the ark and he sits in there for seven days. And on the seventh day, eight days inclusive, God shut the door. All right. So I went ahead and kept doing this. I'm going to add the 14 cassettes to the 1335. I'm going to go from the cross of 2028. Remember, we got to 2028 by doing the 1,274 days uh, from where the rapture might happen. I'm not going to say it's going to happen. I think we're going to see something huge here very shortly that will point us to the fact that it's about to happen. But if the rapture happens on October the 2nd, going into October the 3rd, because this event will be seen. Uh, and then, of course, in Israel, it'll be a day ahead of us. But 1335 plus the 14 is 1,349 days from the cross that we see uh, after what we consider might be the rapture of October the 2nd. Uh, it will land on December the 9th, 2031. Rosh Hashanah is always on December the 8th at nightfall, becoming December the 9th until december the 16th at nightfall always it always it never moves it never changes it's always on those days found that pretty interesting that uh, his math did that i think i'll use this as my uh picture all right so i did the the whole seven years and once again from october the 3rd of 2024 coming up here this is the 28 days, the 14 for each three and a half year period, 28 days of cassettes. And those are, it adds up to instead of 2550, you add the 28 days. So it's 2578 and it comes up to October the 25th. Again, it would because we already did the math from halfway from the halfway point. So October the 25th being the day that uh, Noah went into the ark. I saw a fly on my drink. Um, I believe this was from his channel as well, or maybe this was, I don't recall where I got this. This might've been him. Yeah, September. Yeah, this is him. And he's looking at, uh, I believe he's looking at September the 26th. Two days from now. That's a, that's pretty interesting. Again, the rapture could occur at any moment. We're just watching Oh, this is a very rare picture of the mode of communication that they are using now since they can't use uh, beepers or cell phones. <laughs> Sorry, I, I found that on Facebook. I think Craig Bong posted it. I'm not sure. Uh, that's hilarious. Uh, couldn't have been funnier. I laughed so hard when I saw that. Let's see. Yeah, there he is. This is the gentleman here. And again, we're not mad at him. Uh, he's very necessary. I got to go subscribe to this guy's channel. I can't see it. Let me put on my glasses. His name is Derek Drew, and he is at Bible Study with Derek. I'm guessing that's his YouTube channel. I'm going to have to go subscribe. This gentleman down here, his name is Bo. Pull me, pull me. And, uh, you know, he... Uh, 
he became, I was in my car driving home and he became very upset at me. <laughs> I just told him he was wrong. I, I said, you know, you're right for you and not for me. You, you're definitely staying exactly as you want. And uh, I, he got very upset with me. Um, so I find that uh, he's he's tied to this world. He's making money behind him is money. And uh, he makes the statement that God's going to give us a bunch of gold. I, I don't know about you, but gold won't taste very good. I would rather have bread, food. But uh, he, Derek, is a very calm personality, did a very good job uh, rebuttaling. And uh, he really uh, he really got upset at me. He, he got very furious at me. And he, he cites somebody named Clement. I'm not familiar. I don't get into... <laughs> a lot of that type. I think there's somebody named, is it Kim Clement from back in the day or something? And, and, and I said, well, I don't, I don't cite Clement. I cite the Bible and oof, he got upset. I wish Rick, why did you pull that down? It was really good. You should have never pulled that down. This guy right here, go watch this video. It's foundational Bible teaching. He does an amazing job. I love his uh, demeanor as he's teaching. It's fantastic. He's uh, he's no nonsense. He'll tell you faith versus works. And he will explain to you the difference between a tribulation saint and a bride, a pre-tribulational bride and a saint that will be here until the sixth seal. They will be here till the sixth seal. The Bible talks about two massive groups of people. In the beginning of Revelation, it says, from every tongue, every kindred, every nation, this group will be there to watch John open the first seal. We're, we're the ones saying, John, who are these people in the sixth seal? And John's like, I don't know, you know, because we do. We know who they are, which is why I don't think the saints will be here for three and a half years. Um, it really skips right to it, just like uh, uh, Alicia got his... Uh, how do you say his uh, his double portion? Uh, they will get their double portion. I pray that they uh, will realize what happened and not fall for the lie that, uh, you know, we actually weren't raptured. We were taken by aliens and all that garbage that's going to come up. All right. <clears throat> yeah. Feast of Trumpets, as they know it, they still call it Rosh Hashanah. They're not obeying Exodus. Uh, what was the exit? Is it Exodus 2? I don't, uh, I forgot the uh, word. Suddenly my brain has uh, forgotten the exact uh, passage in Exodus, but they will always call this Rosh Hashanah. It is not. It is uh, Nisan 1 instead of Tishri. But it is called Feast of Trumpets. Feast of Trumpets is a day that no man knows the day or the hour. It is the day that lasts two days. And the reason they don't know is because um, the day of equal parts no longer lands on this day it lands pre-flood as of noah being on the ark it used to be uh the head of the year the spring of the year used to be in tishri but everything changed by six months 182 days i say 182 it's actually 192 on one side and 172 on the other side it's six months and 10 days or five months and 20 days that's a whole video I could make on that. Uh, but Feast of Trumpets, they are calling it October the 2nd. I just, this never happens. This this blew my mind when I realized that they were calling the Feast of Trumpets the Exodus 12. Got it. Exodus 12, uh, 182 day out. This matches perfectly to October 2nd as being the day Jesus rose. And remember, the bodies of the saints rose first and or well he rose first but the bodies of the saint rose and went into the city and i'm like i can't even believe that that matches like that that was incredible so i made a timeline <laughs> for those of you that make fun of my timelines i'm still gonna make timelines it's kind of it's kind of my thing uh it's what i do so i put this on here exodus 12 the very first law handed down to Moses, it changed Rosh Hashanah from Tishri 1 up here to Nisan 1, which is March 17th. September 15th is trumpets. That feast has not been fulfilled yet. 
that is going to be fulfilled at some point in the tribulation. This is the day that Jesus rode in on the donkey. It's called the triumphant entry. He rode in on a donkey in a colt. The day he did that was Nisan 10, which works out to be March 16th. When you go forward 182 days, Tishri 10 is September the 24th. We just passed that. That is the seven-year anniversary of the Revelation 12 sign. It is the Day of Atonement. This has not been fulfilled yet. It will be fulfilled at some point in the tribulation. I personally think this is for the uh, tribulation saint, and I think this is for the Jew. The Jew are looking for their, uh, their Messiah, and I think atonement has a lot to do with that. All right. Nisan 12, March 28th. Tishri 12, September 26th. This is the day of equal parts. Remember, I showed you it was the 27th, but there's that extra day we have to contend with uh, because the Gregorian calendar has 365 days, but the actual, uh, well, the actual Hebrew calendar has 364 days, or the, the Essene Enoch calendar. The biggest mistake I see, uh, these huge channels, very learned people uh, will say is that it's the equinox uh, it just it just isn't. It's the equal lux. It's the equal lux. So. All right. So apparently, and I've been talking with Spinebreaker about this. He's been researching it. He's not getting very far, but apparently a comet atlas, they're calling it the uh, they're calling it the. Uh, uh, the Jacob comet, I think they're dubbing it that, but it's it's Comet Atlas and it, apparently uh, we can now see the fact that it went supernova and it's so far away, it would have taken 2000 years for the light of it going supernova. And there's kind of relating it to Jesus 2000 years ago. And now we're able to see the light from that. So uh, we can now see it after 2000 years. And they're, they're saying something about the 27th, 28th, uh, 29th. I'm not sure exactly what day they're looking at. Uh, yeah, and a hurricane is set to hit me here in Florida. Uh, we're all, uh, any, every, I think Miami is about the safest place right now. <laughs> the rest of us are in big trouble, you know? All right. So the Jews leave Egypt. Remember on the 14th, they were to put that blood over their door. They left after nightfall, which was the 15th. So we call it Nissan 1415, which is March 2930. Jesus went to the cross. He enjoyed the Last Supper on the 29th, and on the 30th, he went to the cross after nightfall, which became the 30th, and he goes to the cross and says, this is finished. Tishri 14, 15 equates to 182 days out, 183 days out, that extra day because of the Gregorian calendar, September 29th, 30th. September 29th, 30th is the day Jesus was born, exactly Jesus was exactly to the very day, 33 and years and 182 days to the very day. Exactly. He was born on the night of the 29th, becoming the 30th. So he was born on the 30th, September the 30th. Amazingly, we have a second moon that is set to arrive uh, on this day. And it's going to make, like Bob said, uh, it will make the fish symbol. It's coming in like this and it's going out like that. And it'll look like a fish symbol as it goes around planet Earth. There has never been in my entire life that I've ever seen a comet coming in, come in so slow that it's going to take 53 days to get around our planet and then leave uh, 53 days later. It's, it's, it's never happened in the history of of anything i've ever heard of so this thing's coming in so slow it'll spend 53 days circling earth and uh, it's due to come in on jesus birthday <laughs> it is due to come in the night of the 29th after sunset in israel it becomes the 30th that's amazing now everybody says well the first four feasts are fulfilled but the last three haven't he fulfilled tabernacles he was born on tabernacles the first feast that was fulfilled was Tabernacles. He came to Tabernacle with us. Uh, and then we still have trumpets and atonement. So look at the menorah. He started on the last candle. Then he went up to the first, second, third, and fourth. The fifth and sixth candles are still not uh, fulfilled. Next, we have 
The day Jesus rises is also the same day as the ark rested. This happened. Uh, he completes the second. Uh, that's the day, the last day he's in the grave, but he stays in there. He's he's done his job, 72 hours, but I think he rises at three o'clock in the morning just before uh, Mary's, the Mary's show up to the tomb. Uh, it says they showed up before the sun rose and the tomb was already empty, I think. Unless he sat there for nine hours playing, you know, Uno by himself, I, I think he stayed in Hades uh, gathering all these people out of there. Uh, for them to rise after he rose. And so anyway, we know that he rose Sunday morning. So that's the third. That's Nissan 1718, which is works out to be April 2nd, 3rd, six months out, 182 days, 183, because of that extra Gregorian day is Tishri 1718, which is October 2nd, 3rd. October 2nd, 3rd is that eclipse. That's the day that they're calling Feast of Trumpets. Now we all know they are supposed to see the first sliver of the moon. They did the same thing on April the eighth. They said, "Oh, it's an eclipse. This is tur this is a uh, this is uh, what they call it. Uh, this is what they call it the New Year Nissan one. This is Nissan one. Uh, this is the first day, and fourteen days after that, they counted to Jesus on the cross. And I'm like, you're breaking your own rule. You said that you had to see the first sliver. You are not seeing a sliver on an eclipse day, but they did it on Nissan eight. They're going to do it again here." They are calling October 2nd, 3rd, um, the day of the eclipse, they're calling it uh, as, and that's fine. That's fine. Because uh, for God to bring the Jews to jealousy, I believe that uh, it has to be done on a day that they are looking at, you know? So, yeah, that's the last picture. So, anyway... As I continue on and do the six month out thing, Heshbon 10, October the 25th, the day that Noah gets into the ark and sits there with the door open for seven days, eight days inclusive, um, there's no match to the March side. Uh, same thing, ha or April side. There's they, Same thing happens on the day of the flood, October the 31st, coming into November the 1st. There's no match on the other side. So to me, I mean, the rapture, literally, we're, we're here on the 24th, the 26th is coming, the day of equal parts, the 29th is coming, the day we're going to have two moons, the day Jesus was born, and the same day Jesus, uh, what is that? That the same day Jesus went to the cross, six months, I mean, think about it, if it's, if I tell you today is six months earlier, is today still today? I mean, we're still, the calendars overlap by six months. It's perfect. So anyway, all right, let's, uh, how do I get out of here? Stop, stop sharing. Yay, there we go. So, all right, anyway, I wanted to bring that on, uh, present that to you, see what you thought about it. And, uh, you know, the Jews are saying it's Feast of Trumpets. That's so rare that that lines up like that. When I, I didn't even realize it until, you know, I, I, I looked at it. I'm like, wait a sec, that seems oddly familiar. Let me put that out on it. I have to see things on a timeline. Um, all the numbers start jumping around in my head. I have to put them on a timeline so I can see how it lays out. And it just it just laid out perfectly. So the day of the flood um, is, uh, is the same day. I'm sorry, the day that... Uh, Jesus rises is the same day that we're going to see uh, the October 2nd, October 3rd, two moons, and it's the same day Jesus rose six months earlier. So it's a mirror date. So anyway, Repo Man 64. I personally, and, and I've been talking in Discord uh, a little bit. I don't, I don't. I don't get enough time to spend a lot of time in there. I'm usually working on timelines and studying and stuff. I just, I wish I could spend more time in there. I just work a full-time job. I just don't have the time, but we get in there and it just, it's amazing as we talk about the tribulation saints. I, I personally have never seen a tribulation saint convert to a bride and give up that nonsense and what's nonsense to us is not nonsense to them. And you need somebody that powerful like Bo 
you need him during the tribulation. You need somebody. But well, let's pray that Bo, once the rapture occurs, he knows that he's missed it and pray that he didn't bring anybody with him into the tribulation, but that he grabs so many souls and warns them, do not get the mark. And he knows that not to get the mark. And that's the most important thing. Um, I believe you get what you want. God does not want robots in heaven. He wants uh, grateful people. He wants grateful people in heaven. And I'll tell you what, when we get there, we're going to be unbelievably grateful knowing that only Jesus got us there. When the tribulation saints show up, they will also have gone through a portion of this tribulation and they will be crying and so appreciative that they're there and not going to the lake of fire. If you go into the lake of fire, you chose that. The lake of fire was not created for mankind, but mankind, for some reason, will choose to go there. And I don't know why, but they will. They will choose to go there. So, all righty, let me get off here. Go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know, and you don't need to tell anybody. And accept the Lord into your heart. The blood of Christ is all you need. Take that cup and drink from it. That's all. That's it. If you want to go do something as an outward expression of what's going on in your heart after that, that's wonderful. Uh, but it's not going to get you any more saved or add to anything that you do. Nothing. So, all right. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. We'll chat with you all again later. Let's see. How do I stop?